Welcome to Gentle Yoga. I'm Brenda. I'm going to start. Um, I, I typically invite you to start in a comfortable position. And uh, usually it's on your back would be the first choice of most people. Um, but if you need to be in child's pose or you need to be um, seated, that's fine too. Um, even on your lay on your side, that might be an option. But uh, we will start on our back today. And so if you want to make your way there, get comfortable. If you want, if you have a blanket close by, you can use that to cover yourself for the first few minutes. Get, get comfortable, take some nice deep breaths where you are in your house. <clears throat> All right, we will get started here. Thanks for joining me. Ah, so once you found the position of your choice, just make yourself nice and comfortable. And if you are on your back, just shimmy those shoulders underneath your backside so you can rest flat. If bent knees are more comfortable, you can collapse those in on each other and it takes a little pressure off the low back and the back of the knees. And the palms either facing up, which will, again allows the chest to open comfortably, or you could put your palms on your belly. And then before we get really comfortable, I'm going to have you take a little squeeze of all your muscles. So if you can just make fists with your hands, point or flex the toes, and then squeeze every muscle you can find in your body. So up through the legs, your glutes, your belly, your arms, make fists, squeeze, and then even your face, uh, grimace with your, with your mouth, with your teeth, squeeze it all, tighten up your neck, inhale, nice big breath in. Hold that breath. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Ah, and then exhale, let it all go. Ah, okay, and then just let yourself pool on the floor. Allowing yourself to get nice and heavy and then turning your attention to your breath here. We're going to open up our hearing for just a bit. Also our sense of touch. So just allowing the temperature of your room to land on the skin. Feel that. Feel the texture of your clothing. Feel the weight of your body on your mat. And then acknowledge any sounds you're hearing at home. So whether you have some music on in the background or maybe you have a pet or someone else at home watching television or talking, just acknowledge that. Bring it into your space, into your practice. Let whatever is be there with you in the moment. Surrender and accept. I'm just breathing into this awareness. I'm starting to draw our attention to our mind. Our mind is very good at taking us away from the present moment, takes us into the future or revisits the past often. So if you can look at any thoughts coming in, like they're on a movie screen. So like you're in the theater all by yourself and you're watching those thoughts on the movie screen. So just separate yourself from your thoughts right now. Any thoughts that come up, just put them on that screen. And just let that play in the background. And then we're going to turn our awareness now to our breath. Following the breath in and out of the body. Feeling the wonderful expansion of the chest, inviting that breath into the lungs. 
and gracefully letting that breath all go back out again. Breath flowing in and out easily, comfortably. A nice smooth pattern. May you incorporate the whispering sound in the back of the throat, that feeling like you're wrapping your throat around a straw. Help control the pace of the breath. Feel the breath work its way down and toward the belly, touching the diaphragm and coming upward toward the shoulders. Releasing all the air back out again. Taking a moment to celebrate your breath to let it be the star of the show for just a few moments. Continue to breathe in this beautiful pattern of breath that you've established for your practice today. And bring your arms alongside your body, hips and hands are side by side. So your palms are facing the hips. On the next inhale, we're gonna take the arms straight up. So you're gonna point your fingertips toward the sky and maybe you stop there and maybe you go back down from there. Otherwise you can go over the back of the head Notice if you can touch your thumbs on the floor behind you and then inhale, pointing the fingertips back up again and then bring them down alongside the hips. So we're practicing moving with the breath. So let your breath be the guide. And as you're breathing, your arms are moving to the same pace. You might find they're actually moving faster than you would think you would. So we're gonna inhale, point the fingertips to the sky. Exhale, go overhead. Inhale, fingertips back to the sky. And then exhale, hands next to the hips. We'll do a couple more of those. Again, letting the breath be the guide. One more time, arms up and back. This time on your next inhale, let's point the fingertips at the sky and then open out to the side on the exhale. Inhale them back to the sky. Exhale them alongside the hips. So coming up and making a T with the arms and then back to the starting position. Yeah, and moving with the breath again. One more. Good, enough for the snow angel. So we're gonna inhale the arms out to the side. Exhale overhead. Inhale halfway back down. Exhale back to the hips. So we're just skimming the floor making two half circles with the arms coming up overhead and then back down to the hips. Palms are facing upward most likely. Palms may face the hips as you come back to the starting position. Just moving at a comfortable pace, comfortable rhythm, comfortable pattern for your arms. Let's do one more full snow angel. 
Good, and then rest your hands down by your sides, palms down. Once again, tucking the shoulders under the back and then we'll slide our feet flat to the mat. Feet and knees side by side, nice and tight. And then side to side, shifting, rocking the knees right to left. Inhale through the middle, exhale with a twist. Inhale through the middle, exhale and twist. As you rock, you come into the edges of the feet. Knees stay together as best you can, as you can. One more to the right and one more to the left. And then we'll return to center. Feet go hip distance apart and the right leg extends all the way out. Foot is flexed. We're gonna keep this leg beautifully extended so the knee is as straight as you can get it comfortably and then just raise the leg. Now there's no goal, so you don't have to come up to a certain point. You're just gonna come up till you feel stretched to the back of the right leg. And then slowly with control, returning the leg to the mat, we'll tap the mat and then come back up again. So you could inhale as you lower down. And then exhale as you lift up and we're sending the belly a little bit into the mat. So you can work your abdominals a little bit here as well. Encouraging some length to the hamstring muscles, the calf, the glute, the low back. It's warming up the backside of the right leg. One more. And then let's take the leg back up to an extended position. And we're gonna move it to the right and then to the left. So I'm gonna have you cross the midline just a bit and then over to the right and the left. So inner and outer leg, getting some action here. Inhaling, exhaling. Good, one more. Then come back to center. The right leg goes down to the mat and then circle it around to the right and lift it up toward the sky. And then take it down to the mat and then lift it out and circle. So it's kind of a D, the letter D down and around, you're, but you're drawing it backwards. <laughs> and maybe some of you make a D like this and that's great. Good, okay. Our leg is straight up to the sky. Now let's go the other direction. So you're gonna make the roundness of the D circling down and around and then come straight up through the middle. You can exhale, make that D. Inhale, straight up. One more time, down and around and straight up and then hug that knee into your chest. You can grab on top or underneath the knee, hug it in. If you wanna lift your forehead, add a little lift there. Just give that knee a little hug, love squeeze, and then release it. Ah, good, rest that leg. Okay, let's extend the left leg all the way out and down. We're just gonna lift and lower this leg so you could Take notice of how the hamstring feels at this time. Again, exhaling as you come up. So you can send the abdominals down a little bit and get a little bit of abdominal warm up contraction. As the leg comes up, notice what the upper body does. See if you can keep it as relaxed as possible. Again, no goal. The, really the only goal I have for you is to try to keep the knee as straight as you can. Inhaling and exhaling as you lift. Connect to the movement, connect to the muscles that are working. 
Really get curious about what's happening as the leg goes up and down. And then one more time and we'll leave the leg extended upward. And now we'll take the leg side to side. So moving to the left and then crossing the midline, moving to the right. As you're moving, once again, keeping nice and still. So your back is still flat on the mat. Try not to roll from side to side with the leg. So that may affect your range of motion. Body has to stabilize as you move the legs. You're getting a little bit of work here in your core. One more. Back to center. We're gonna lower the left leg down and then make that D, so rounding back up to the sky. And then take the leg down and around. Yeah, good. And down and around. If you're feeling this in the leg, getting a little bit of work there, getting some warm up, that's good. One more time, down and around. Okay, let's reverse this now. We're gonna go round and down and then back up through the middle. Inhale, exhale. Good, one more. And then hug the knee into the chest. Yeah, a little different type of warm up. And then Forehead to the knee, if you like. And release the head down and we'll take both knees into the chest and give them a hug. Exhale as you pull them in. Inhale, open the knees up a little bit and then pull back in and get on your exhale. One more time, open. And exhale and close. Great. All right, let's roll on to our side and then come up to a seated position. If you have um, a blanket or a pillow you wanna sit on, if that's great, you can sit on that to get your hips up. We'll be seated for a little bit here. One leg in front, one leg in back. Work your sits bones underneath the spine. Shoulders roll back nice and tall. We're gonna have our hands on our knees. We're gonna go into a little chin tuck. So we're gonna tuck the chin back and maybe down just slightly. If you wanna use your two fingers, index and middle to guide the chin, it can sometimes helps with the movement. So we're just exhaling, slide the chin back slightly, inhale and release. As the chin Tucks back, the shoulders melt down toward the mat. Good, one more time. And then relax in neutral. Tip your head to the right, leaving the shoulders heavy. Inhale through the middle. Tip the chin, excuse me, the ear to the left. Inhale through the middle, ear to the right. Through the middle and left. And then over to the right, pause there and breathe. And take your left hand either out to the side or behind your back. Nice deep breaths into the side of the neck. Good, release the hand back to the knee, come back to center, and then tip the head over to the left. And the right fingertips go into tripod or the arm goes behind the back for a deeper stretch. Breathing here. Eyes closed. Use the breath as a massage, softening and melting the muscles.
and then release the hands back to the knees. Let's make a big circle with our rib cage going around and around. Inhale through half the circle, exhale through the other half of the circle. Good, one more and then change your direction. Noticing. How does this feel? Where do you feel it? How does this circle feel compared to the other direction? One more. And back to center, nice tall spine. Press into the knees, send your heart to the sky. Drop the shoulders down and back. Lift the chin, lift the heart. And hold and breathe. And reverse this, rounding over a barrel. Send your heart backward, catching yourself with your hands, opening up the shoulder blades, letting the chin fall. One more breath. Coming back to center on your inhale. Roll the shoulders back and down on the exhale. I'm gonna have you tripod your right fingertips on your mat. Excuse me a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so we're gonna keep the right fingertips there. Our left arm is gonna move. So I'm gonna bring my left arm across my body, reach it just out to the corner of the right side and then round and come backward, open up into a twist and again, bring it forward and back. So making a big open circle with the left side. Yeah. Last two. One more. And then we'll, let's leave our left fingertips back there and then let's go with the right arm coming out and around and opening, circling. Yeah, good. It's warming up this torso and getting some movement. You know, you all know I'm a big fan of twists. <laughs> That's my holiday gift to you all. <laughs> One more. Good. All right, fingertips behind on both sides. Tripod the fingers, lift the chest up. You can stay here or flatten the palms and then press into the palms to lift up the hips. Nice and easy. This is our first one, so ease in. Good. And then lower the hips down and let's walk the hands forward. So counter posing that back bend, forward bending now, walking out to the point where your tailbone is threatening to leave the mat. And then you stop your hands and actually press your weight back into the tailbone. So you can do just this nice long stretch. Feels like extended child's pose a little bit. And you can just let your head rest ears inside your arms. You can rock the shoulders side to side. Good. And then let's come to center and we'll walk our hands back. Let's go into another uh, different kind of twist. So we're gonna walk over to the right side. So as I walk over, you might feel a little collapsing happening through the spine. So I want you to think about staying tall and also think about the breath. So as you start to wring yourself a little tighter, sometimes the breath gets a little squeezed. So go to that edge where you can still get a full breath, but you feel a tiny bit of constriction through your body, through your belly. 
and just breathe into that constriction. See if you can soften it. If you'd like to put your left hand in your right knee, that'll help to give you a little bit of support as well. And then the right hand is behind you. And now adding a little bit of movement, when you exhale, deepen your twist. So go ahead and rotate a little bit so you're actually squeezing yourself out like a dish rag. And then when you inhale, release that twist that you just put into the torso. So exhale, squeeze, rotate, twist. Inhale and release that. Exhale, twist. Inhale, release. Exhale, twist. Inhale, release. One more. Inhale. Yeah. Good. Walk back to center. Let's do a seated cat. Cleanse the palate a little bit. And then exhale, seated cow. Ah. Good, back to center, neutral, and then let's walk over to the left side. We'll see what's happening over here on the left. Okay, find your position. Again, get to the edge of the twist where you still feel pretty good about the breath, how much you can take in. Close your eyes. Just imagine your lungs are like clouds. They're just puffing out as you inhale. And they soften as you exhale. No forcing, just being. And now we add a little bit of movement, twisting a little deeper on your exhale and releasing that twist on your inhale. Exhale, twist. Inhale, release. Moving at your pace. How about one more? And back to center. Good, seated cat. Releasing, seated cow, round, and let go. And back to center. Let's take the leg that's behind or underneath and just flip it. So you're just switching your leg position a little bit. And then we'll walk out one more time. Again, just pausing where you feel that your tailbone wants to lift and then sinking it back and rocking the shoulders. Good, and then walk the hands back and then hands go behind you one more time. And you can stay with the palms tripod position or palms down and press through the heart. And then again, there's that option to lift the hips. Good. And then go ahead and release down. Extend the legs out in front. So we're leaning back here. This should feel pretty good. Pressing through the heels. And then we're gonna start walking forward. So I want you to be honest with yourself. So you start walking forward. If you start to really find your low back is rounding and you can't go any further, just pause there and breathe into any tension in the muscles that you feel. If you feel like you can keep walking, go ahead and keep walking until you feel that your legs have had about as much tension as they can handle, and then just pause there and breathe. If there's a lot of tension behind your knees, just bend the knees just a little bit 
and that'll take that out and then you can start to focus on the hamstrings. Okay, and now I want you just to relax into the forward fold. So round the spine, bend the knees, let the arms fall. You can grab your feet, grab your ankles, back of the knees, just bend and release and hug the legs. Good, and then let's walk backward. Okay, we're gonna do uh, one more stretch on each side um, in the seated position. So we'll do our, our corner stretches, our half straddle splits. Okay, so let's take the left foot inside of the right leg and we'll take the right leg out at an angle. So about 1.32 o'clock if you're looking at your clock. We're gonna stay forward facing with our shoulders. Take the right hand, we're gonna slide it along the top of the right leg. And then maybe you find the ankle, maybe you find your toes. Wherever you land is great. And just finding that little bit of side bend here. Now, if you bend your elbow, you can pull yourself down a little further. You could even grab underneath the, the leg and pull down there. And then let the head fall to the right. And now let the left arm come up and over and add a little bit of extra stretch through the side body. If that's too much, just go back to the left arm. Maybe a hand is on the hip or on the floor. So more of the stretch about the side body rather than the hamstring, but you could get best of both worlds. And then you could actually work into opening up that left shoulder, rolling back. You could take your left hand behind your back and then open up and bind slightly. Just play with it a little bit. Good, couple more breaths. And then release very gently. So let's roll the left shoulder forward and then we'll walk ourselves up here. Good, great. Okay, other side. All right. So we've got the left leg out to the side now. We've got the right foot um, inside the inner thigh. I'm squaring my shoulders to the front. And then I'm gonna take my left hand and slide it down the left leg. This is the time when long arms come in handy. <laughs> okay, and then just anchor there, find your stretch, and then take the right arm up and over if and when you're ready. So now if you feel like, ooh, that feels a little bit much, then just backtrack and then hands on, hand on the hips maybe. Deep breath in and out. And play with the roll of the shoulder so you can open up the right shoulder toward the sky. You could fold it down even, see if that feels good or feels better. Maybe you find a spot on your low back where that stretch feels good with rolling the shoulder down. You can't get it wrong unless it's a bad hurt. And we all know what that feels like. And then binding behind the back is also your option. One more breath here. Good, and then let's roll the right shoulder down and then walk ourselves gently back to center. And then shake the legs out in front. Relax for a moment. Good, okay. Let's go to hands and knees. We're gonna drop into our extended child's pose slash modified down dog. So the, the reason this is different is the knees are under the hips and not wide. So we stay in a aligned position. Wrists are in front of the knees. Ankles are behind the knees and then just sit back into your heels. So I have my toes curled under. 
If it feels better to go flat, that's great. You can also put a blanket underneath your ankles if you wanna hover the ankles. And just stretch back here. Again, flexing the knees as much as you feel good about. If you need your tailbone in the air, that's fine. Rocking a little bit here. We're gonna pull ourselves forward. So we'll call it a cow pose. It'll be a little bit out of the perfect position, but we'll just pull forward. So the hips are gonna come forward of the knees. The shoulders will land above the wrists and then press back again, exhale. Inhale, pull forward. Exhale, push back. Inhale, pull forward. Exhale, push back. One more. We're going to pull forward on our inhale. Pause when the shoulders are over the wrists. If you need to go to fists or forearms, you can do that. You can stay on the knees. We're going to lift up into a plank from here. So just lift up the knees. So position your feet accordingly. If you're on your knees, you could always just lift one knee. <clears throat> and then maybe the other and just hold your plank. Two more breaths. And now downward facing dog, or you can go to the modified downward dog that we just came from and hold and pedal the heels. Relax the heels, come back into your plank. Go ahead and release the knees to the mat. Walk down to your forearms. Lace the fingers together like you're in a prayer pose. And then you can stay here or lift back up into a forearm plank. So knees off of the mat. Again, one knee down is an option. Pressing through the forearms and the wrists and the elbows. One more breath. You can lower the knees and press back into a child's pose or modified down dog or walk your feet forward. Tailbone is gonna raise into the air into dolphin. So it's a downward facing dog on your forearms. One more breath, walk your feet backward and lower your knees down and walk yourself back into a full child's pose with your knees open and wrap your arms around your legs. Tuck your chin toward the chest so your hairline is on the mat. If that's too much flexion, bring yourself into stacked fists, rest your forehead on your fists and lift your tailbone off of your heels. Good, one more breath here. And then start to lift out of your child's pose, hands come flat to the mat, press yourself up. Lift your weight off of your feet, curl your toes under, if this is too much, um, when we're gonna rock back onto our feet, you can stay in the hands and knees position and just bring your weight a little bit onto the toes. Otherwise, you're gonna walk back into garland pose. Again, you're, you're welcome to keep the hands down. You can bring your hands together in prayer pose again, in front of your heart. And then as you pull your hands down, you're gonna spread the knees wider. So hands drop down in front of the heart, pressing the knees open. Good, release, bring your hands to the mat and raise the tailbone up, forward fold. Nice deep breaths here. Soften the knees and move into your halfway lift or your monkey pose. Fingertips on the mat, 
on the shins or to the thighs. Breathe here, shoulders are pressing into your back pockets, chin is tucked back, back is flat. Soften the knees and come up into your chair pose. Float the arms up, sit back into the feet. Two more breaths. Inhale, lift up, hands come together in front of the heart on the exhale. Hold here and breathe, feet hip distance apart. Close your eyes, reach your feet into your mat, check in with your body, relax the shoulders. Cup the arches of your feet, like you're trying to scrunch your mat into your toes. Okay, let's do a little balance. I know your day wouldn't be complete if you didn't do a little balance here. <laughs> okay, we're gonna kickstand the left foot. Arms going out to the side, like an airplane. Slide your left toes backward. Anchor them down onto the mat. This may be good enough for some of you. Others may like to lift their toes up a little bit. And others yet might want to go all the way parallel to the floor, lifting the toes straight backward. Slowly come up. You can tap your toe down. Woo! See, I give myself permission. <laughs> or you can come right up into a, a knee bend. <laughs> it was that plant behind me that tripped me. And then extend the leg. You're going to take a big step forward. Drop the heel down. Roll through the bottom of the foot. Cup the arch on the left. Now you're in perfect position to do your airplane on this side. So right leg comes up if you like, or keep it down, balancing. Draw the right leg forward, either stopping with toes on the mat or coming straight through into knee bend. Stretch the leg out long and take your step. Shift your weight and then bring the left foot up to meet the right foot and come into mountain pose. Grounding into the mat once again. Breathe, check in with the body. Shift the weight to your left foot. Kickstand the right leg. Come into dancer's pose. So now we bend the right knee. The knee points down toward the floor and you can just leave it back there bent or you could grab onto it and raise your left arm up toward the sky. And then you may also choose to bend forward here, raising the right knee upward. Left knee is soft. We're gonna let go of the right foot and step back into a warrior position. So warrior two here, opening up to the side. Shoulders against a wall, turn the head forward. Reverse warrior, left palm to the sky, right hand to the back of the right leg. Gaze upward at the horizon, or you could look down at your back foot. Back to warrior two.
helicopter forward. And then start to slide your right foot forward to meet the left and into mountain pose. Ground the feet. Scan the body. And then start to shift to the right. Okay, dancers on this side. So what happened on the other side, may be true of this side, it may be not true of this side, depending on what's going on with you today. So start with bending just the knee and then deciding if you wanna go further, grabbing the foot and then raising the right arm. An option to bend into full dancers. Leaning forward. With control, step back, releasing the left foot into your warrior two position. Shoulders against the wall. Good, and then rotate the head. Knee presses back. So the knee's moving toward your little toe, exposing the big toe. Chest is open, shoulders are relaxed. Good. Breathe. Flip your right palm, send it to the sky. Left hand comes on the back of the left leg, reverse warrior. If your knee followed you and straightened out, the, the right knee that is, just take a deeper bend. And again, your gaze focus is up to you. Using what feels good. Warrior two. and helicopter forward and step into mountain pose. Good, hands in front of the heart or by your sides, whichever feels more comfortable here. On your next inhale, let's sweep the arms up overhead Swan dive down into the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, downward facing dog. Hold here and puddle the legs. And then come back to downward dog. Nice big stretch, lifting the tailbone up. Fingers are spread nice and wide. Good, ah, and then let the knees find the mat. Bring your forearms down as well, and then start to walk the knees back so you're laying on your belly in Sphinx pose. So palms are down, elbows are underneath the shoulders, and you're dragging yourself forward toward the top of your mat. Neck is long, head is in line with the spine. If that's too much height, just slide your elbows back further and drop the chest further down. Two more breaths here. And then slowly lower yourself down, widening the arms. Good. Okay, we're gonna take this into an upper body lift. So my elbows are bent here. We'll try this. So you can use your arms as support to help you press up or you can lift them with your upper body. You can try both to see what feels good for your upper back and your neck. So as we exhale, we'll lift or push away from the mat. So you can keep the forearms down here. So lifting upward and then pausing at the top and then inhale, lower back down. And then push up, exhale. 
Inhale, lower. And now if you wanna try lifting the arms with the head and chest and shoulders, so you're coming up a little more effort, moving down into the low back even, and then release, inhale, lowering down. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. Elbows pull back if you're lifting your arms. Inhale down one more time. Exhale, lift, squeezing the shoulder blades down and back. Inhale, lower. Good. Awesome. And then just lift up out of the pose. Stretch the arms overhead. Stretch the legs out long. Gonna roll yourself onto your right side just slightly and slide your left knee up. And then slide higher with the right hand above the left hand. So it's kind of like you're climbing, climbing the ground, half frog perhaps. You can play with the position of the foot so you can make the knee a little straighter or you can make the bend in the knee a little deeper. So you can play to see what feels good on that side. One more breath here. Good, and then slide that left leg back down again. Back into neutral. And just give yourself a little roll onto the left side. Slide your right knee up. And then slide your left hand higher than your right. Two more breaths. And then slide back to neutral. Good, slide your hands underneath the shoulders, press yourself up all the way back to your heels. We're gonna find our position on our backs next. So when you're ready to go down, you can go ahead and do so. If you wanna go ahead and relayer any clothing, grab a blanket. Do one last pose besides the hugging the knees into the chest. Say so maybe you want to do happy baby or anything else. Bridge pose, spinal twist, anything that's grounding before final relaxation. Now is a chance to round out your practice. Just taking your time and then moving into Shavasana when you're ready. Allowing the legs to relax in bent knees or extended position. Shoulders once again under the back, palms up or on the belly. Open up the back of the neck by nodding the chin downward and just resting into your mat, completely letting go. Finding the breath once again, letting that become the focus. If you're still in your yoga breath, you can start to soften that a bit. Let it be a little floaty, allowing a pause between the inhale and exhale. Let your eyes fall to the back of your head. Let your heart rest against the spine.
Let the organs in your belly just fall toward the mat, resting downward. Allow your bones to melt. And then let go of the physical body. Feeling the rise and fall of the breath. Allow yourself to be. Inhaling and exhaling through the only effort here. Can you let go just a little bit more for just a little while longer? I invite you to take the next three breaths and make them a little deeper, taking in more air and pressing out more air, sending your belly downward, inhaling all the goodness and exhaling what doesn't serve you any longer. You could do that once or two more times. And just go back to a comfortable breath and start to move your eyes behind your eyelids gently. And then rest the eyes and then take the movement into your hands and your feet. Signaling the nervous system that we're about to transition out of our practice. Also signaling your mind and body that it's okay to let the practice go. We're gonna take with us what we need for the rest of our day. So when you're ready to move forward, you can roll onto your side. If you're comfortable and you want to stay in Shavasana, you can just, you could end the session here if you'd like and just go into your meditation. If you're ready to move along, come up to your seated position when you're ready. And then once you've centered, you can go ahead and bring your hands together in front of your heart, or maybe you're happy resting them in your lap or on your knees. And at this time, I ask you to think about what you've been able to live without these last few months. 
and what you have a greater appreciation for after the last few months. Finding some goodness, finding some joy, finding some awe in your life. Thank yourself for being here today. I thank you for being here today.